Hey, Kim here from Craft Luggy. Today I'm so excited because I'm going to be showing you how to make these polymer clay earrings. You guys seem to really like the last video and a couple of you have requested that I do a different technique with these earrings. So that's all. That's what we're doing today. Um, I'm going to be showing you how to get these funky lines in the clay. I'm going to be using this thing called a clay extruder and you can find this pretty much at any craft store but it comes with a bunch of different attachments and that is what gave me these lines, these little squiggly swirly lines and um, it just kind of makes the earrings pop a little bit, but it's very simple and I'm also gonna be using a different kind of clay than I was using last time. So I'm gonna be using this Sculpey Primo. I'm not using this exact color, but I'm gonna, it is like the type I'm gonna be using is the Sculpey Primo. And it seems to be working really well and people just had these brilliant reviews about it. So I was really excited to try it out and I was pleasantly surprised. So anyway, I will show you just how simple this is and let's go ahead and get to it. For this project, you're gonna want polymer clay of some kind. I'm gonna be using this Sculpey Primo clay just because I've heard such wonderful reviews about it. So I'm excited to see how it works. Um, any color I decide to use, I will post the specific color in the uh, description below. And then actually anything I use, I'm gonna put in the description below. That way you know where to find it as well. And then you're going to need shape cutters of some kind. If you don't want to spend money on little shape cutters, you can also use an X-Acto knife. You can use, in my first video, I believe I used little caps, like lids, and I just used those as my shape cutters and they worked really well too. And so I'm just using these little guys and then this little teardrop. And then I'm going to be using, I'm so excited about this. This is called a clay extruder and it kind of looks like a dental syringe <laughs> to be honest but i'm going to be using this tiny little um spaghetti looking attachment with it it came with a ton of attachments but that's the one i'm going to use today it just gives it a really fun effect i'm really i'm excited to show you and then you are also going to need depending on how you want to make your earrings um you're going to need either these ear wires which i you can pretty much get these anywhere um, and then you're or you're going to need these little earring posts and then no matter what you're probably going to need actually not probably you're going to need these jump these jump rings um, these are the six millimeter round jump rings and these just kind of help attach your clay together it also helps attach your um, ear earring wires together. So that'll come in handy. And then you're going to need some type of like, I don't know, what are these plier earring pliers? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Little needle nose. Um, you're going to need these to help attach the jump rings. I will show you how to do that. And then you're going to need a rolling pin. I'm just using this clay rolling pin. You And I used to use a baking rolling pin and it worked just as well too. So um, use whatever you have available. And then this little guy just helps the clay to scoop up really nicely from the surface. That way you're not distorting your clay image. And then I believe that is all. I am using, you can use either a pin because you're gonna need to put little holes in your clay earrings. You can use a pin, like a sewing pin, or you can use um, like a drill bit. I think that's what it's called, but I'll show you both ways. Uh, they both work really well. And then I'm using everything on a Teflon sheet. I got this on Amazon. It just helps the clay not to stick to the surface. And so th that's why I like using this so much. Anyway, enough of me chit chatting. That's all you're going to need. And let's go ahead and I will show you how to start with mixing your clay. I'm gonna start with this color called blush and I'm just, I started warming it up already, just making it a little bit more movable and then, <clears throat> or pliable, I guess. <laughs> and then I'm going to go ahead and roll it out. You kinda wanna make sure it's, it doesn't have to be perfect just because we're gonna be adding, we're gonna be adding this white color. This is called pearl. And then I'm just going to, I kind of want to give it a uneven effect. So I'm just going to put it here and there. 
and I'm going to roll it out. And then roll it out again. And just keep doing this until the white starts to show through. And you can kind of break it up a little bit just to get the white showing up. But I kind of want it to have a messy, uneven effect. This is the look I wanted to achieve. I wanted it to look kind of marbled, not even, just very kind of subtle, but random. So I have the look I want. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to get the clay extruder ready and I'll show you how to set that up. So for the clay extruder, all you have to do, there's a little detachable thing right up here. You're going to remove that. And then this is the color I'm going to be using. It's this kind of charcoal color. It's graphite pearl, I believe. And then I'm going to kind of get this in a cylinder shape, put it in that little syringe, put the little spaghetti attachment on. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. Kind of. <laughs> okay. It's not focusing. There we go. So, and then you're going to put this thing right over it. And then you're all set up. So it's going to come out from the end here. And it takes, unless you've warmed up your clay, it's going to take some serious effort. But you can see it's starting to come out like that. And so you just want to make them, have them come out so they're long little stringy, dangly noodle looking things. Okay, so I had to get my husband to help me and then I had to like push this against the table because these teeny tiny little like spaghetti holes here, it's so hard to push clay through there. So I am telling you that this bigger, these bigger ones here are so much easier. I tried these last night and it was, it was simple. There was, I had no problems, but these tiny ones, oh my goodness. So I'm going to go ahead, take these out of there. Look how fun they are. And then all I'm going to do is put them randomly. You can honestly like swirl. You can just place them on there. You can do designs. I'm honestly just going to make this random. I'm just going to lightly place them on top of the clay. So I'll meet you back here in just a second when I'm done laying all these out. As you can see, I have all my little clay noodles placed how I want them, just very random. And then what I'm going to do is you don't want to take your rolling pin and just go right over them because I, that it, it's happened where these little things kind of stick to this. So what I do is I fold my Teflon sheet back over and then I just very, very lightly roll over them just to give it a smooth surface. So just be very, very gentle about it and then check it periodically to see how it's doing. So you can see it's still a little bit, you can still kind of feel and see the bumps from where they come up. So I'm just gonna roll it a little bit smoother until I can't feel any bumps. Now what I'm gonna do is make sure that the end of this Teflon sheet is taped down so that <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and just kind of lightly peel up the sides here. There we go. That way it doesn't distort the image. I like to do that right before I make everything into shapes. So then I'm going to go through with my shape, my little shape cutter and just decide where I want everything. So I like this. And then you can go ahead and remove them later, but I'm just gonna go ahead and cut everything out. I'm gonna make a couple pairs here. And then you just wanna very gently very gently pop it out. There we go. My fingernail indent kind of left a kind of left a mark here. That's why you have to be careful. So 
so that's okay. I have plenty of clay. I'll just redo it here. So I just, I just made the shape and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pin, like a sewing pin, and then, I don't know if you can see this, I'm trying to concentrate. Just kind of scoop it out from the inside, stay as close to the edge as possible. And boom, it looks a little bit cleaner. You can kind of fix the shape a little bit, but that way you don't get a fingernail imprint on it. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna show you, I'm just gonna pull this remaining clay out of here. And then I always have a habit of wanting to peel it up. Don't do that. Just use, use this thing, that's what it's for. And then at this point, you kind of have to make a decision if you want to use a drill bit to put holes in the area in the clay or if you just want to use your pin. So I'm going to show you both ways. So I'm going to put my little pin point right here. And then just like that. And then in one of, actually these are going to be, these are going to be the posts, but you still need a little hole there. So I'm going to pin, put a little pin circle right in there and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way. Same thing right here. You kind of spin it a little bit to make the hole a little bit bigger. And then same thing right here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna very carefully pop these in the oven. I'm gonna follow the instructions on this packaging. So it says, if I can find it, 275 degrees Fahrenheit, um, 30 minutes per 1 fourth inch, so six millimeters. So these are not six millimeters. I would say these are about three to four millimeters. So I'm going to put it in the oven and check it in about 15 minutes. So then I'll meet you back and I'll, we'll kind of go toward the next step. Now that these are baked, I just wanted to show you, I did bake these on just a piece of foil and um, they're completely cooled. That's really important. Don't do anything until they're completely cooled. So I'm gonna go ahead and transfer these onto my Teflon sheet. And then we're going to go ahead and I'm going to just kind of inspect the edges and I can see that there are some edges I'm going to need to sand a little bit. So I'm going to grab some sandpaper and I'm just going to take care of those edges. So this is a 400 grit sandpaper. And then I'm just going to go around and very, very gently sand the edges here. Okay, now that I have everything sanded, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to place the hoops, the studs, the jump rings, and then, but first we have to make sure there are holes to attach everything to. So for this part, I'm actually using 1 16th of a drill bit, and then I'm going to create, and I'll use my little pointer here, I'm going to create a hole right here as close, whoops, as close to the top as I can. Um, it's hard to see, it won't focus, but basically it'll be about, about right there. And then I'm just going to go ahead and drill a hole right through there. I have a hard time doing this like at this angle. So I'm going to do it over here and then I'll show you what the end result looks like. As you can see, this is what it turned out like. So I did, I did the, um, drilling on one of the small, one of the large. Um, so each set of earrings will have the two different techniques on how to do this, but I mean, they turned out really well, very smooth edges. So I'm happy with them. And then I'm going to go ahead and show you how to put the jump rings and the, um, and the earring hoop and the studs in. So I'm going to start with placing the jump ring. So what you want to do, place your needle nose right through it and then pull it apart and that's going to open your jump ring. And then what I'm going to do 
is bring it through just like this. And then I like to close it just a little bit. And then you're going to want to take your earring, um, my gosh, earring hook. <laughs> I can't think of anything today. And then make sure it's faced the right way. That's important. And then close it up. And then now you have your earring. I love it. So we have both of the larger ones done. One thing I wanted to note on these earring hooks is that in the pack, they come like this. So they come like this. So if you were to put it on the, on without adjusting this, if you were to put them on just like this, the earring is gonna be facing this way. So what I did was I just very slightly turned this part toward me and then you can see that I lined it up just like that. That way, when the earring lays flat, you can see it instead of having it turned sideways. I hope that helps. I hope that makes sense. For these smaller earrings, all I'm doing is, and these are the ones that are going to have the stud or the post through them. So all I did was place a jump ring and then I'm going to bring this smaller section through. And then very carefully meet the ends in the back here. And if you need a bigger jump ring, you can. I don't want to get a bigger jump ring because the next size up is huge. So as you can see on these earrings, maybe I should have made the hole a little bit closer to the edge. But all in all, I don't think it looks I don't think it looks bad. So I'm going to go ahead and place the post. All right, so I'm going to use this E6000 and I'm going to go ahead and place a dot. This part's so easy. Right in the center here, kind of toward the top though, because if it's dead center, then if you have smaller ears, that's going to be a little bit more of a challenge. And then I'm going to go ahead and sorry, my hand's in the way, but I'm going to kind of mix this glue around and place it just like that. Whoops. And then I'll try not to have my hand in the way, but just like that. So then what I want to do, I want to let the earrings dry for as long as the directions say. So with this glue, I know that you have to wait at least 30 minutes but it's best to wait at least 24 hours so that it's completely bonded. While those posts are drying, I wanted to show you a technique if you are interested in adding a little bit of shine to these. So if you wanted to add a little bit of silver leaf to these, this is how you would do it. So I'm gonna be using this Mod, Pod, Mod Podge. Um, this is the glossy kind. And then I'm gonna open this here. Hopefully silver flakes don't go flying everywhere. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is paint the very surface with a very thin coat of Mod Podge. Just kind of dampen it a little bit. And then I'm going to take my pin and grab onto some silver leaf and then just stick it on there randomly. It's kind of hard to grab. I think a toothpick might be better. So yeah, if you're wanting just a small detail like that, kind of press it down. Then you kind of want to let it dry for a couple minutes. This stuff dries so fast. And then you're going to do one more coat of the Mod Podge, Mod Podge, <laughs> right on top of it. Now that it has dried for a couple minutes, I'm just going to add one more coat of this Mod Podge right on top just to seal that layer. And I'm going to do that for both earrings. Okay. 
And then I'm gonna go ahead and let those dry thoroughly for about 30 minutes or so. Here's the final product. It's actually been an hour since I glued the back of these posts on. Um, I'm not gonna wear these for another 24 hours. I just wanna make sure the, the glue has set completely. But you can see this is what the back looks like. I am so happy with these. And then with these, I love them. I love the silver leaf. I just, I think it adds a little bit something extra. I almost didn't add the silver leaf, but <clears throat> I decided last minute I really liked it. So I'm glad I did. And you can see these are really simple. You can make them any color, size, texture, shape. There's just so many different things you can do with them. But I wanted to show you this technique with the um, clay extruder. I just think it it just adds something a little bit extra to these earrings that I haven't done in the past. So I hope this helped and I am so excited about these. I cannot wait to wear them. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helped you. I know that there's a lot of different ways and techniques you can make polymer clay earrings, but I just wanted to open your eyes to one of the new techniques that I discovered. And I'm really excited about this clay extruder. I think that it does such a good job of incorporating more shapes and um, like dimension into each piece that you make. But um, if you wanted more detailed written instructions on how to make these earrings, go ahead and visit me at craftbuggy.com and I'll post the link below to my specific blog post. And if you like this video and you want to see more, go ahead and subscribe and I hope to see you next time for the next video.